There is a mechanic in Diablo 4 that I massively underestimated. See, I've been playing in a duo, and whenever we encountered a dungeon with this mechanic, we kind of joked about it. It was a running gag, and it was the kill all mechanic. Whenever you have a dungeon that wants you to kill all the mobs... We thought it sucked because all those mobs are all spread out. Most builds don't have the best AoE, but it's actually a hidden gem. And I'm going to explain why in this video and why this is probably the next thing on the chopping block in terms of XP farming in normal mode dungeons. So the, the dungeon I'm going to use as an example in this video is Demon's Wake. Demon's Wake is a two-part dungeon. The first part, you have to kill two rare monsters, after which you go into a huge room where you have to slay all the monsters. However, we're in this game, in any slay or mission, there are two mechanics that are really beneficial to you. The first of which is that you will get ganked by random waves of elite mobs, which massively boosts the elite count in the dungeon itself. And second of all, after a certain breakpoint of mobs cleared, you will have all the mobs be spawned on top of you. So what's better than running to the mobs to kill them? Well, it's having the mobs be teleported onto you to kill them. So let's get in there and we'll do a run as an example. I'm playing Tornado Druid, so results may vary based on which build you're playing. There are many different dungeons you can do this in. Demon's Wake, just the first one I'm testing. I actually believe Palstron just made a video, which I'll link up top. He made one in a different dungeon utilizing this exact same mechanic. But I'm building on that, and I went and I've searched different dungeons that benefit from the same things that that one did. So the runs should take anywhere from two to three minutes, and I've been averaging between 650 to 700,000 XP. Most of the time you get a good number of elite mobs on this first floor. As you can see, elites are spawning on me as well. Even before we get into the next room, we're just getting ganked by these big packs of elites, which is very nice. Because that's what we're looking for. We want as many elites as possible. And this now, given the nerfs to everything else, this ability to have elites spawn on top of you as part of these mechanics, seems to be the best way to get a large amount of them consistently as they've been, uh, what is it, standardized across all dungeons but yeah let's take care of this guy and then we need to head on into the next big room let's go i actually forgot to empty my inventory before i came in here but hey ho i'll miss a bit of loot for you guys why not the first big room cleared obviously you're gonna a bit of move speed's gonna help there's a bit of travel time in this dungeon some big big rooms you need to walk through retry them oh god sure but then the way that I choose to do it, I do a an anti-clockwise loop. You can go clockwise, there's no particular reason I go anti-clockwise. It's just the way I did it the first time, and it's the way I've done it ever since. So you come straight in here, and you're just going to kind of poke your nose in, kill as many mobs as you can, because it's not, if you leave every mob, they're not going to get teleported on top of you. You can actually see some elites spawned on top of me there. These weren't here naturally. These actually spawned on top of me. You have to kill a certain number of mobs before the before the mobs will be sucked into onto your location. So as you see, I'm leaving a few here and there, but you'll see later in the dungeon why that does not matter at all. Now this, this particular dungeon is obviously going to be better for builds that have clear that is more efficient in these open rooms. I'm sure there are examples of dungeons that are more linear, more narrow, if you have a build that does its damage uh, better in that kind of situation. You can see that a massive pack of elites just spawned on top of me, very nice. What do you guys think about the nerfs though? Honestly, I made a video about it and how I want Nightmare Dungeons to change. If you haven't checked that out, go look at it. But not, I'm not a big fan of the way they're changing things. Okay, that huge, look at that. All their mobs spawn on top of me. Look, no red dots on the map. Not a single one other than where I'm stood. And the dungeon is complete, look at that. So I wasn't super efficient running through to grab every single mob. Just cleared as many as I could, left a few stragglers. And as I got to the end there, boom. All on top of me, all dead. We can then go out, reset the dungeon, and go again. So that is the first mechanic that is very strong. The second one is another kind of... It's not really a mechanic as much as a mob type. You'll probably know that Blind Burrows is a very popular dungeon. There are many dungeons like Blind Burrows that have these things called Spider Hosts. And the reason Spider Hosts are really good is they spawn more monsters when they die. So they spawn more small spiders that you can kill. 
and I've been trying to find dungeons that have that mob type. So obviously we've got Blind Burrows. Blind Burrows is great. Everyone knows about that. But I'm going to try out a different dungeon that I've been looking into down here. It's pretty close to the waypoint, which to me is a big side point. I hate running to the to the dungeons from the waypoint. So let's go down here. And the dungeon we are going to try is called Soroka Caverns. This has a lot of spider hosts in it. It's also, if you're wanting a more narrow layout, this has a very narrow layout. All these very tight corridors. And it just goes in a figure eight pattern. So you're never going to need to backtrack. All right, so let's check XP before we go in. We have 15.3 million. Let's see the XP afterwards and how long this takes us. Uh, we'll put a timer on the screen. So this dungeon, again, is split into two parts. The first of which we need to find three of these towers, which are basically elites and kill them. Uh, it's just a small little circle at the beginning that you want to do a loop of. Let's go do that. Tip, I think every single time I've done this, I've had to go down first. So don't get baited into going up, or you're going to run into a dead end. See these mobs here? These arachnid horrors. These hoes. Look how many small spiders they spawn. Huge amount. This is very, very similar to blind burrows. And there's one of the horrors done. You can see it's very narrow, very linear. If you've got a build that does well in tight corners, something like Tornado or maybe some kind of Twisting Blades build is going to be great in there because, I mean, your Twisting Blades is basically as big as this corridor now. So you're just going to be doing damage all the time. And then there's always just one little guy off to the side that you want to take care of. Very, very little amount of backtracking you have to do. Pretty decent number of elites, but it's mainly these little normal mobs that you want to deal with. Well, we'll check the XP at the end. We'll know exactly how much they're worth. Yeah, let's blast on through. So you can, you can go either direction. It's exactly the same, whichever way you choose. Whether you go left, whether you go uh, right or up. In this case, we'll go up. And once again, it's just a complete lap. This is just a, a circle. There's nothing... <laughs> And then, as with the first zone, this is just a complete circle. It goes all the way around, and you will do all the objectives naturally just running through. And there we go. We're done. So, no backtracking at all. We could just go through and finish the rest of the dungeon. There'll be a few more mobs for us to kill. And then we're going to get back to this kind of... Not really a dead end, but where we could have gone at the other intersection. So, XP, 15.96. So, we got about 650k for that dungeon. It took us about two minutes. So, you could farm a lot of XP in here. And the final thing to mention is, of course... If you're doing dungeon solo, the only way to reset them is once you finish the dungeon, press E, press leave dungeon, and then you can leave the game and come back in. Now, alternatively, these two dungeons that I've shown are basically right next to their waypoint. So you could actually bounce between these dungeons if you really wanted to. That's perfectly fine. You could just port to Firebreak Manor, run to Demon's Wake, port to here, run to here, and you could just port between them both and alternate them. Alternatively, if you prefer one dungeon over the other, you can just leave the game and come back in and you'll be good to go. So have fun farming. I hope this helped. I'll see you next time.